Hello, hello everyone, it's Strumman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you know whenever I'm posting my next video. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the fact that when it comes to the amount of energy and time we have in a day, we are only granted so many. And I think that if you're like me, you're someone who kind of gives a lot of that time and energy to the world or the people of the world. I am making this video because I want everyone to realize how important it is to kind of reserve some of that for yourself right up front uh, instead of giving it out to the world because at the end of the day, you are not guaranteed that people are going to give back to you. And if you've given so much of yourself out to the world and you're kind of running low, and you are expecting other people to kind of fill you back up, that can leave you feeling really empty and really alone. Whereas if you take the right amount of energy right from the get-go and give it to yourself, whether that is taking yourself on a walk or going out and grabbing coffee and reading a good book, it's so important that you know what fills your own cup. Because at the end of the day, if you aren't able to kind of fill yourself up or pick yourself back up when life gets rough, then at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot easier for you to fall into a negative headspace because you don't have the proper amount of energy or time left to kind of fill yourself back up. So my advice is right at the beginning of the day, you should be choosing what time and how you're going to be able to kind of pour into yourself the time and energy that you need to kind of get through your day and by the end still be in a good mental headspace. I know that for me, a lot of the stuff that I do for work requires me to be in a positive headspace because not a lot of people wanna work with a life coach that's in a negative state of mind. So for me, it is really important for me to kind of realize the things that are kind of detracting and kind of adding uh, positive energy to my day. And for me, I know that kind of my alone time because I'm a little bit more of an introvert my alone time when it comes to reading a book, when it comes to sticking my ear pods in and kind of going for a run, it's kind of that time to kind of fill myself back up. And I know that for me, when I was driving to my corporate job, I kind of had an hour commute every day to and from work where I was either listening to an extremely positive podcast or an audiobook, or just jamming out to music that just kind of made me feel good about myself. So something that I want you to do right now is to take out a piece of paper or you can take a note in your phone as well, but write down three things that you can do for yourself on a daily basis that you can kind of use to like revive your energy and bring you back into a positive headspace. For me personally, I know that when I do my positive talks, which are usually towards the end of the day on Instagram, those conversations with my friends and the guests that I bring on to my show honestly bring my energy so high that even on my worst days, a positive talk can kind of pull me back from the ledge of negativity. And I think that those types of things are really important for us. So whether it's you calling one of your friends that you haven't talked to for a while, or maybe it's just kind of watching one of your favorite old movies that brings a smile to your face, but whatever it is, you wanna make sure that you're doing it on a regular basis because life can be very demanding and draining on all of us. And it's so important for us to take the time to kind of fill ourselves back up while the supplies last because we are only granted so much. So while you still have the supply and energy, you wanna make sure that you still have that time. I know for me personally, I have made note of things that bring like really good energy into my life depending on what type of level of energy I have left. So if it's really, really low energy by the end of the day, talking to people on the phone can be a little bit exhausting to me, especially if throughout the day, I've just kind of been giving and giving and giving to the people that are already in my life. So maybe calling a friend who might not be having the best day either might not be the best solution. But at the other end of the spectrum, for me, reading is really easy for me to kind of focus in on and just kind of relax while doing. But looking at the other side of the spectrum, maybe my focus is kind of off. Maybe I'm not able to kind of focus in on a book while reading. So I could either do the calling of the friend or watching a movie on Netflix, mainly because 
I know that if I try to read a book when I don't have focus or I'm frustrated or I'm upset, not being able to focus on a book that I'm trying to read, I will end up getting more frustrated with myself because I'm frustrated that I can't focus on a book. So I think that it's important for you to be able to gauge where you are and what type of energy you're able to commit to yourself. So maybe at the beginning of the day, for me, caffeine is really important. So I need to kind of find caffeine before I can function as well as showering. I don't do well throughout the day if I haven't showered in the morning to kind of wake me up. But once I'm in that woke state of mind where I'm kind of beginning to start my day, I can plan out my schedule of what I'm going to be doing based upon how I'm feeling that day. So a lot of times if I'm waking up and I'm kind of groggy and feeling gross in the morning, I'll want to try to put off some of the work that requires me to be in a really positive state of mind. Because when I'm creating my seminars for my life coaching, I want to be in a really good headspace. And I think that's important for all of us to realize maybe there are tasks that we can do where we're kind of feeling meh, not at our best, but then there's some projects that require us to have a lot of passion and a lot of focus. So throughout your week, try to kind of pick times where the energy matches the task that you need to do, because at the end of the day, you wanna be able to give the right amount of energy to the right projects. One example that I like to use when it comes to kind of comparing the type of energy that you have to use during the day is when it comes to dinner time, I know that there's a lot of times when I will go to the grocery store and buy all the ingredients for this amazing recipe that I wanna try out. But at the end of the day, that requires a little bit more time than just kind of sticking something in the microwave and heating it up and eating it. So I wanna make sure that if my plan is to go home and make that full dinner, uh, where it's probably going to take a lot more time out of my schedule for my evening reading and kind of toning down and relaxing for the day, that I kind of save some energy throughout my day to kind of use later on in the evening, but also prepare for whatever could come during the day because we're not always blessed with a day that kind of follows our schedules perfectly. So maybe there is a client emergency for me that kind of drains me of all my energy. And by the end of the day, I am not in the mood to cook a full course meal uh, that's going to take me my whole evening. So having something in the freezer or the fridge that I can make very quickly, it'll really help me not kind of punish myself at the end of the day where I feel like the only thing I have in the kitchen to eat is that full meal that's going to take forever for me to cook and then kind of depleting me of all my positive energy and time uh, that evening that I could have been using in a more positive way to kind of pull my energy back up. The more things that you can collect and write down over time that kind of pull your energy back up, your attitude back up, uh, the better your life will be because really it becomes a habit of the things that you constantly do. And when it comes to healthy habits of saving energy, you'll end up saving energy just in case something chaotic comes up that kind of steals energy from you during the day to where you can kind of use those reserves later on in the evening to kind of pull yourself back down. Because for me, I am someone who will stress a lot, uh, especially if I feel like I left some projects on the table that I really thought needed to be done for that day. And then I didn't really reserve any energy to get those done, especially if there's a deadline. I know that now that I'm working for myself, there's less deadlines, but I still have a lot of deadlines that I put on myself so that I can continue to be productive. I say self-reflection at least twice a day is a healthy thing to do. I usually do it in the morning and the evenings when my brain is just kind of formulating how that day is going to go and how it's been. And I've really found that just creating that type of schedule for myself of creating the habit of self-reflecting at least twice a day has really helped me kind of capture the type of day I'm going to have. But that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully you guys are having a great week. And like always, feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below. Love hearing from you all. And then also check out my other social medias. I did get my Patreon up and running. So you guys can go follow that and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.